G'day, you bloody dickheads. Vaping Bogan, back again for another Ridgy Didge review. Hope you're all doing good as bloody galt. Got a new mechanical tube all the way from Russia from a new mob on the scene, Savage Mod Co. It's called the Antagonist, and uh, this one is definitely my kind of colorway. Loving that fucking purple and uh, pink fade. The artwork actually is by an Australian Instagrammer, Art by Dale. Check him out if you want to see some of his other work. There's four designs in the set. They've got a monkey, they've got a fucking tiger, they've got a skull, and they've got this uh, screaming snake, which is uh, pretty fucking cool. The RDA is the Nightmare Mini. Looks real nice with this tube and the drip tip giving me some real nice matching match action is from Signature Tips. So the Russians have been fucking killing it in the mech mod scene lately. Seems that while North America is losing some of our treasured mechanical developers, we are uh, getting new ones out of Russia and uh, once again, very, very fucking nice. Let's take it for a little ripperoo. Got some point one aliens in here as usual. <laughs> Real nice performance of this one. Love the switch and uh, the simplistic design to this one. Not a whole lot of parts to it. We're going to go through all the ins and outs, break it down shortly. But before we can get there, as usual, let's crack a fucking beer. Got a big can of Aussie goodness from Deeds Brewing. This is their Oat Cream Juice Train. It's an Oat Cream New England IPA. Love me a creamy IPA, so I'm hoping this one lives up to my expectations. Deeds do pump out some tasty drops. Designing beers can be a fun time, especially as brewers love the what if game. What if we did this? What if we did that? Usually ideas fly back and forth, maybe crashing and burning, maybe making it into tank. One idea kept coming up, bubbling away like a fermentation at top speed. What if we made a different version of Juice Train? What if we bumped up the dry hop? What if we used more oat? What if we added lactose? So we did. Enjoy. All aboard the Oat Cream Juice Train. <laughs> Love a good fucking ride up on a can. They're using Citra Galaxy Simcoe and Amarillo Hops and uh, Deeds are brewing out of uh, Glen Iris, Victoria, Australia. But uh, let's just get into it, see how it fucking tastes. Let's drink a beer. There it is, cunts. Looks like a nice, hazy fucking beer to me. Smells very tropical. Passion fruit on the nose there. A fucking cheers. Oh, fuck me. That is bloody awesome. That is fantastic. Super passion fruity, as the nose was telling me. It's got that nice creaminess there, but not super creamy. Just enough to give it that lactose kind of feel. There's a nice hoppy bite right on the end there. Real tropical, real smooth and uh, refreshing as well as slightly creamy. That is just absolutely fucking glorious. That is exactly what I want in a creamy IPA. It's got that real nice hoppy bite to it, the tart passion fruit flavors. There's also a slight sweetness in there from the lactose, the creaminess, the fucking fruity, tropical, refreshing vibes. It's nice to get a beer that can give you not only like a creamy feel, but also refreshing and crisp at the same time. That is a fair dinkum, bloody good cream IPA. Let's pair it up with a fucking liquid. Been really enjoying this new Aussie line called Rebel. This is their musk flavor. Always love must candies growing up. I've ate bagfuls of them over the years. Still enjoy them today. And uh, there's not a whole lot of musk liquids out there. This one has really fucking nailed that sort of uh, rose water kind of uh, musk flavor you get from the uh, the chalky candies. It's even got a bit of that kind of chalky feel to it. Real fucking nice. It should go well, I think, the, uh, the slight floral element with this uh, fucking fruity, creamy beer. Oh, that is fucking beautiful. Yeah, really getting tropical now with the addition of the musk there, that sort of floral element goes really fucking well with the uh, very tropical passion fruit flavors of this beer. The, uh, the chalky sweetness going very well with the uh, lactose there. <laughs> Yeah, giving it like an extra creamy, extra fruity kind of feel, changing the, uh, the the main flavor of the beer to more of an overall tropical feel and less of the sort of dominant passion fruit flavor. That's a fucking nice beer and uh, goes well with that liquid. But enough waffling over these hops. Let's get down in the up and close. We're gonna break this mech down, have a good squiz, and then we'll talk the pros and bloody cons. Let's have a sticky beak. All fucking righty then. So this is the packaging. Your Savage Mod will come in a nice big Pelican case. Very nice little fucking label on here too. But let's see what you get inside. We will find your mod, certificate of authenticity, and a polishing cloth. Well, let's get into it. 
So it's a single 21700 fully mechanical tube. They come in four different colorways. So this one here is like a, a pink and a sort of purple blend. And they've all got an individual sort of piece of artwork from uh, Art by Dale. So this one is the snake, really, really cool sort of old school traditional tattoo style snake on there. There's a pretty cool monkey, uh, a tiger, and then there's a skull. Some of them have got kind of like an aged um, paint design to them. They all look really fucking nice, different colors, different designs, and pretty awesome that it's uh, an Australian piece of art on here, designed by uh, an Aussie artist. Very fucking cool, Australia meets Russia. So you've got your uh, engraving up the top there on this one. I really like this geometric shape they've got going down the bottom. And then on the back, I think all of them have the uh, Savage Mods logo. Pretty cool little bit of text there. And they're nice and fucking short. Quick little size comparison for you up against a few other familiar mods. We've got the uh, Vindicator 21 from Kennedy over here. It's maybe a couple of millimeters shorter than the Kennedy. And then we have the uh, RCM Russian Custom Mods Bonneville, the Infinity mod. It's pretty much, yeah, it's bang on the same height as uh, one of these RCMs. So a familiar sort of form factor for those that are into mechanical tubes. Up the top, you've got a hybrid connection, pretty fucking standard for a mech these days. You've got antagonist engraved on there. You've got made in Russia and you'll have a serial number. I've got lucky number 13. Now the uh, tapering they've got up here is about 25-ish millimeters, maybe a fraction under, but it looks good with your 25 mil atomizers. I've mostly been using the uh, Nightmare Mini here, which is a 25 and it fits sort of nicely up against the edge of the tapering. It flares out to 27 millimeters in total. So again, similar to a lot of other mechs in its overall thickness. Moving our way down to the bottom here, you've got your switch, which is kind of sort of similar to the way the L Thunder works you unscrew this bottom cap here and you've got a nice brass tube i believe they're all brass tubes with a cerakote finish on them very nicely machined the threads are all buttery smooth and uh, nice and polished didn't come all uh, patinaed or anything like that so you've got the sort of cup on the bottom of your mod and then you've got the uh, the button which sort of slides in and out of that that bottom piece there. You then have a contact and a spring. It's a constant contact system. So the spring sits in this uh, sort of, I guess, white Delrin cup at the base here. You've got a, a fixed contact, which I think is milled into the, uh, the button itself. So the spring sits in that cup. It's not going to carry any voltage, so you shouldn't have any hot button issues. And then this contact here is going to butt straight up against your battery. And then as you press in the switch, it's probably going to be compressed a little bit already just screwing in the uh, bottom of the mod. But then when you fire it, that contact makes contact with uh, the button here and uh, you get ignition. So it's an all brass construction. I'm pretty sure that this uh, contact on the base uh, of the switch is all brass. You've got this piece which comes out of the spring uh, and I don't know whether, yeah, there you go. That little press fit number comes out of there if you want to clean it. All very nicely machined. Obviously a little bit of uh, wear and tear on there, but um, very, very well polished. Everything fits together really nicely. The spring sits in that little cup there and then that just sits in there drop that into the base put your battery in sexy odb wrap on there you can go positive end in first or negative it's not really going to matter but it's a fairly big contact on the switch so i've been going positive end up and then you just screw that together and bob's your fucking uncle it's got a nice short throw to it now the throw may be longer or shorter depending on the length of the 510 on your atomizer. So just be aware of that. But for most of the addies that I've been using on here, I get sort of a, a pretty standard throw. It's not crazy short, but it's not super long. It's a, it's a nice length. The spring has got a good tension to it. It's not too stiff, but it's not too loose that you have to worry about it firing. And the uh, the button itself is sort of sunken into the base of the, uh, the mod. So you're not gonna have it sort of uh, firing when you put it down. It's got a nice stable, fit to it and it uh, has a nice sort of slight beveling there so it, it looks really fucking good with the uh, rest of the mod you've got this little sort of line here which goes well with the uh, the lines on the top and the bottom. The switch design also allows for a little bit of adjustment. Now I've been running it with the uh, cup screwed all the way in, which gives me a nice short throw. But if you actually wind this cup out and because you've got a little bit of paint 
still on the tube here, I believe I would say that it's designed to uh, wind out a little bit and give you a little bit of a longer throw. Actually changes it quite a bit. You can see there the throw length, maybe it could go even a little bit more. When do we start seeing brass? About there. So you can see you've got quite uh, a distance and that throw now much longer. If I wind it in, much, much shorter throw. So because it's got a fairly stiff spring in there, this doesn't have uh, an easy sort of time turning. It, uh, it's smooth, but it's got a bit of sort of tension on there from the force of the spring pushing down on uh, on the button. So uh, yeah, I believe that you've got a little bit of uh, adjustment there on the throw, which is always a really nice fucking feature on a mechanical mod. Really, really simple, clean sort of lines to it. Just a, a straight tube with some nice engraving. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, as always with uh, a hybrid mechanical mod, make sure that you're using a hybrid safe 510 pin on your atomizer and what I mean by that is the, uh, the little pin sticking out from the threads on your uh, Addy should be protruding like this one. You can see there that little bit of copper sticking out from the stainless steel. If your 510 on your atomizer doesn't look like that, don't use it on a hybrid mechanical mod. All right, fucking don't go blowing yourselves up. But that's about it for the up and bloody close. Let's jump back up top, wrap this fucker up. So there it fucking is, the fucking antagonist. Pretty tasty looking mech, certainly liking the colours on this one, but uh, that's me, you fucking know that. Let's get into the pros and bloody cons. What do I like, what do I fucking dislike? Well, the artwork has got to be a big fucking pro on this mod. Really cool engravings, really nice, deep, crisp, clean engravings. And the artwork, yeah, hey, it's fucking cool. I like tattoos, and uh, this one <laughs> looks like something I'd get fucking tattooed. Actually, it kind of looks like one I do have tattooed. Um, <laughs> so yeah, really love the artwork, not just this one, but the other three options all look pretty fucking dope. It was hard to uh, pick one for them to send me. So yeah, big fan of the uh, artwork there, especially that it's got an Aussie fucking featured, which is pretty fucking dope. And as I kind of mentioned, really good build quality, not just the engravings, but the overall machining is fantastic. Right up there with the other top mechs that I've had out of Russia, things like the RCMs, things like the God Mods, things like the uh, Rock Vapes, all really high quality machining, feels very, very nice in the hand, the threads are all buttery smooth, the button, it's exactly the way I like a bottom fire mech to be. It's short enough, but it's not too short the throw, it's got a nice smooth feel to it, it's never misfired on me, and it fucking will punch your lights out, really good performance. <laughs> On par with all those mods that I just fucking mentioned. Very, very happy with how this thing fucking hits. Like that it's a short mod as well. It's got a nice stature to it. It's keeping it simple. There's no crazy curves or anything like that. Just a, a straight kind of classic mech mod shape to it. But I think the engravings are really what they wanted to show off here. So makes sense to keep the tube nice and straight. Really simple to take apart and clean. You don't need any tools when you want to clean your contacts. You just unscrew it, take out the switch. You can take out the contacts, polish them up and uh, off you go again. So maintenance, very, very simple on this fucker. I like that there's four different engravings, four different pieces of art. They've all kind of got the same geometric shape down the bottom, which kind of brings them all together as a set. But if you're into mech mods, hey, it wouldn't be fucking bad to have the whole fucking lot, would it? <laughs> it looked good on the fucking shelf. So yeah, really, really cool that it's not just paintwork that they're offering that's different, but there are individual engravings. So what could I find in the way of cons? Well, not much, to be honest. The only thing I'm slightly disappointed in is I have a tiny little fucking chip in the paint just on the edge of where it tapers. It's a hard edge, which often happens with mechanical mods. Um, I don't think it's a huge deal. Probably not an issue overall, but uh, I've got to mention fucking cons. So that's about it, dickhead. So what are they going to set you back? Well, unfortunately, they're not available through sort of retail sites. They are a new mob, so you're going to have to pick them up through their Instagram page or email them directly. The black one will cost you 190 bucks. The other colored ones will cost you 200 USD, that is. So pretty kind of in line with uh, what you pay for other Russian made mech mods of a similar quality and design. Pretty fucking fair, I reckon, for something that is pretty fucking nice. So that's about it for me, dickheads. Another nice mech out of Russia. Really liking what they're doing over there at the moment, so hopefully that continues. But I'll leave it there. So I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this Muppet gets up to outside of the YouTube videos. If you want to support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, share it around. Make sure you turn on that little fucking bell icon there because YouTube are a bunch of mumpties. 
Mumpties, YouTube are a bunch of twats and a lot of people don't get notified even with that bell on there. So it might give you just half a chance of knowing when a video goes up. But if you really want to keep me behind the lens and think about hitting some of my support links, as I say every video, this is an independent channel, which means I don't get paid to make reviews. I don't take any sponsorships from vape companies and I don't do that sneaky little jumping the queue fee like other folks. I want to make sure you're getting a truly unbiased opinion on these products. But to keep that up, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page, the special content and a vlog on there each week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as access to my little Patreon community. We hang out in the Facebook group in the Zoom rooms, we watch sports, we drink beers and we have fun because those fuckers are top cunts and keep me doing my thing. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub over me fucking dicks off or your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you're vaping on. Whether your mech mods made in Russia, America, China or Timbuk bloody too. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh.